In this video, we'll learn how to do quadratic and cubic regression in desert. In this example, we are told that gas mileage is tested for a car in the different driving conditions. At lower speeds, the car is driven in stop and go traffic. At higher speeds, the car is overcoming more wind resistance. The variable x given in the table represents the speed in miles per hour for a compact car, and the m of x represents the gas mileage in miles per gallon. So we are asked to use regression to find the quadratic function to model the data. This part is important, the fact that it's a quadratic function, because that tells us what form we want our answer. We want our answer in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's what it means to be quadratic. It's degree two. And then they tell us some different rounding things, round to the nearest 10,000 hundred respectively. So I'm going to go to desmos.com. Desmos.com backslash calculator. And I'll go to the plus in the upper left and insert a table. For my X column, I want to use the X values that were given in the table. So I had 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, and 65. So those came from this table back I want the Y values to be the M of X values that are given in the table. So starting with 23.5. So I'll have 23.5 25.8, and 22.7. Now, at this point, double check, look back at your data, make sure that your X's and Y's match up with what you were given in your original data. If you enter one value wrong, it will mess up the weight. Okay, so I have the table. Now I'm gonna go to the second box here, and I want to do Y1 tilde, so I do shift, and then the key to the left of the number one on the keyboard. And then I'll do AX1 plus BX plus C. And it says I got something wrong. It says X may not be used as a regression parameter. So it's saying that because I forgot the one on that second X. All right, so now I'm given um, a A, B, and C value. And I forgot the squared on that. So it's AX1. I have to put a square on that in order to make it quadratic. So Y1 tilde AX1 squared plus BX1 plus C. And that looks a little better. So now I have to adjust my window. So to adjust the window, I come over to this wrench on the right hand. Um, corner, upper corner. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my minor grid lines. For the x axis, I want my lowest x to be smaller than the lowest x in my table. So the lowest x in my table is 25. So I'm going to make my lowest x value over here a 20. And my highest x value is 65. So over here, I'll make my highest x value a 70. For the y, I want to do the same thing. Look for your smallest y value here. My smallest y value is 22.7. So I'm going to go ahead and do maybe a 15. And my highest y value that I see is 32.7. 
So I might go ahead and do 35. So I've got this great scatter plot and the regression um, graph. So what I'll do at this point is I want to come back over to where I want to put my answer in. And I want to look at the numbers that I got. So my A was negative 0 0.0. Two, three, six. So I'll come over here, and my equation is going to become y equals negative zero point zero two three six x squared. So that's where the 10,000 comes from, four decimal places, 0, 2, 3, 6. And then the next one, they want to the nearest thousand, I believe, so 2.107. Oh, they only want the nearest hundred for the next one. And then the nearest. So I'll do plus, and I have to go back and look again. I forgot it already. 2.11. I'll go ahead and put in here my 2.11x, and then the nearest tenth for the last part. So let me go back here. And the C value is negative 15.2 minus 15.2 minus 15.2. So there's my quadratic regression equation. This would be the answer to my quadratic regression equation. Now we are asked a couple of follow up questions. At what speed is the gas mileage the greatest? Round to the nearest mile per hour. All right, so let's think about what this is actually asking us. It would be the greatest when we have a maximum, right? The speed is, um, at what speed is the gas mileage the greatest? So in other words, where is y the greatest? Now we know that we have a parabola that goes like this. And we know that there's a maximum right there. So there's our max. And that's what we're trying to find. Now with a parabola, that's the vertex. So what we want to do is we want to find the x value of the vertex. Speed is x, gas mileage is y. So for the vertex, we're looking for the speed at which the gas mileage is the greatest. And for a parabola, the x value is negative b over 2a. So we're going to go ahead and use the value we have right here. So that's going to be negative 2.11, that's our b, divided by 2a, which is 2 times negative 0 0.0236. And this is how I would show my work. And then I just have to go ahead and put that into a calculator. So I'll have negative 2.11 divided by two times negative point zero two three six. And they say round to the nearest mile per hour. So that would be 45 miles per hour. 44.7 would round to 45. And so this would be 45 miles per hour. 
All right, last part of the problem says, what is the maximum gas mileage? And remember, gas mileage is the Y value. So we have Y is going to be F of 45. We found the X value at the vertex is 45. So we're going to plug that into the equation. We're going to have negative 0 0.0236. Times 45 squared plus 2.11 times 45 minus 15 points. All right, now it's calculator time again. So I'll do negative 0 0.0236 times 45 squared plus 2.11 times 45 minus 15.2. And they say round to the nearest mile per gallon. So that would round to 32 miles per gallon. 31.96 would round to 32. So I used Desmos to find the equation. I also got this great scatter plot and a great visual of my graph. Remember to set my window. What I did was I looked um, for the X minimum and X maximum. I looked below my lowest X value on the table and above my highest X value on the table. For the Y, I did the same thing some number less than my lowest y value, and then for the maximum, a number greater than my highest y value. So that was quadratic. Now let's do one with a cubic. So let's look over here. For a certain individual, the volume in liters of air in the lungs during a 4.5 second respiratory cycle is shown in the table for 0 0.5 second intervals. Drop the points and then find a third degree polynomial function. Third degree tells me it's going to be cubic. To model the volume V of T for T between 0 seconds and 4.5 seconds. Hint, use cubic regression option or polynomial degree three option on a graphing utility. Now we're doing Desmos. So let me go ahead and grab Desmos here. So try to make it so I can see my data and Desmos at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just hit the X to clear out. To put the table in, I do the plus, select table. For my X values, I'm going to enter them just like I see in the table. Okay, I have all my X values entered. Now I want to do the Y values, 0 0.00, um, 0 0.09. 0 0.28, 0 0.47, 0 0.63, 0 0.76, 0 0.81, 0 0.75, 0 0.56, and 0 0.20. Okay, I've got them all. So now I go to the next line. They tell me to do a cubic. So I'll type in Y1 tilde a x1 cubed plus b x1 squared. And to get into the exponent, I'm doing shift number six on my keyboard, um, plus c x1 plus b. All right, got it. I've got my cubic. 
Now I need to enter it. Oh, they don't want don't want us to enter it yet. They want the scatter plot. Okay, so let's adjust our window. Come over to the wrench here. Your X minimum needs to be smaller than your um, lowest, or actually it could be equal to the lowest, so I'll be zero. And then I'm going to do five as my X maximum, because I go from zero to 4.5. So just to be a little bit higher than 4.5, I'll choose five. For the Y, I'm going to do zero as my lower. It wouldn't make sense to have negative numbers in this example. And then my highest, if I look here, my highest is 0.81. So I might go ahead and do one as my highest. Now, I've already found the equation, and so it's going to graph the equation along with the scatter plot. If I don't want that equation there, I can click on the circle next to it, and it will get rid of it. And now I can match up my scatter plot with the options over here. All right, so it matches up with B there. And now they want the equation. All right, so I need the equation that's over here. So let me come back over here. I'm gonna switch where these two screens are. Okay, so I've got my equation right here. They say um, round each coefficient to four decimal places if necessary. So my A is negative 0 0.0415. And then I have to do X cubed. My B is 0 0.1602. And that's attached to an X squared. Then I'll do 0 0.1661. That's attached to an X. And then minus 0 0.0089. Tells me to check the variables. So let's see. Did I miss something in there? X cubed, X squared. And X. Oh, what I missed is that they want T instead of X. So let me go back and change all of these to T's. And I know they wanted T because they say V of T for T between 0 and 4.5. So pay careful attention to the variable. So that's how you do a cubic in Desmos. Remember to get your graph, you adjust your window using this wrench. If you want the graph of the function, make sure that circle next to it is filled in. If you don't, click it and it will get rid of the, the graph.